Hyvää iltaa! One of my previous works is a ROM hack, a fan translation of Chrono Trigger, a famous JRPG by Square. One of the features that sets my translation apart from nearly every other fan translation in the world is its ability to conjugate names. English is a language where most of the grammar is accomplished by adding small extra words, called prepositions. These prepositions have no meaning by themselves, but they express a relationship with respect to another word. English prepositions include words like at, on, from, to, in, and so on. However, my ROM, ROM translation is to my native language, which is Finnish. Finnish language does not really use prepositions. Instead, it uses a principle called conjugation. In conjugation, the word itself is treated as a malleable object that changes shape depending on the situation. For example, the Finnish word for daughter is tytär. However, to say my daughter, we would say tyttäreni. It is important to note that this is not just tacking suffixes into a word. The word itself it cha changes shape. The conjugation rules in Finnish are extremely complex, and Finnish is actually said to be one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn, at least if your native language is English. It is just so different. I mean, look at this family tree. Finnish is not even in the same tree with English. Languages like Russian and Greek are closer to English than Finnish is. To be honest, there are other languages that have complex conjugation rules, but very few languages have as many grammatical cases as Finnish does. This poses significant challenges to computer software developers and localizers working with one of these languages. For example, in a video game you would typically have something, somewhere a message that says, says something like You found one horn, you found one feather, you found one mop, you found one star sword. This is generally implemented by a pattern rule, where there is a blank slot for the name of the item, but the rest of the sentence is fixed. This approach works poorly in Finnish. If we translate the pattern literally, we get the following sentences. Löysit yksi sarvi, löysit yksi sulka, löysit yksi moppi, löysit yksi tähtimiekka. And this is just wrong. Anyone who knows Finnish can tell. In this kind of sentence, the item name should be conjugated in the accusative case. Löysit yhden sarven, löysit yhden sulan, löysit yhden mopin, löysit yhden tähtimiekan. But the item names might come from one list that is used everywhere in the game, including the player's inventory. If the, pl if the names were in accusative cases in that list, the inventory would look totally wrong. The items should be listed in the nominative case, not in the accusative case. There are a couple of approaches often taken by translators to solve this problem. One way is to rewrite the sentences such a way that the nominative case does work. For example, yksi sarvi löytyi, yksi sulka löytyi, yksi moppi löytyi, yksi tähtimiekka löytyi. But this often requires changing the word order, which is not always possible. Also, it no longer says you found this and that, but this and that was found. The translation is no longer accurate. The other option is to add a scapegoat, a label that gets the conjugation treatment, leaving the template parameter untouched. Löysit yhden esineen nimeltä sarvi, löysit yhden esineen nimeltä sulka, löysit yhden esineen nimeltä moppi, löysit yhden esineen nimeltä tähtimiekka. The scapegoat here is the word esine, meaning item. This is proper grammar, but again the translation is not accurate. It now says, you found one item called a mop. Not, you found one mob. This approach is commonly used in computer programs where the scapegoats are words like file, folder, user, address and so on. It leads into cumbersome language, but it is an acceptable compromise. But in an RPG where you can change the player character's names, none of this will work. In Chrono Trigger, before the game even starts, you will give a name for the main character. This name, and names of other characters you can name, are referred to everywhere in the game. 
using the cumbersome circumventual expressions would be inappropriate for the atmosphere of the game. In Chrono Trigger, I made a system that automatically conjugates any name that the player might enter. It is not based on hardcoding the conjugated forms of names in a table, because the player can enter any name they want, and there are about 10 different conjugations that, uh, that are used throughout the game. For every name. Instead, the conjugation rules were written in a special scripting language that I made for just that purpose. It is extremely limited and really only suited for rudimentary string operations. My inserter tool would interpret this script and translate it and compile it into assembler code and inject it into the game ROM. Thus, the game would correctly conjugate almost any name that the player might enter in real name in real time on the SNES console according to the Finnish grammar rules. Later, I re reused this same system in Tales of Fantasia 2, and that's what I did 15 years ago. Man, time flies. Today, if I wanted to do this, the script would look very different. I would probably do something like this. The syntax is a sort of mix between C and J and JavaScript programming languages. Because a lot of you folks have never written a compiler, I thought it would be nice if we went through the process step by step. Mind you, I have never taken a course in compiler design, so what I do might not, might not be the same as your average university course. It is prob probably going to be interesting. This will be a video series in which we will go step by step through the process of creating a simple compiler for this made-up programming language covering the whole spectrum, from language design through optimization using different inter intermediate representations into assembler code generation and hopefully then running it. The primary tools and languages that I will use will be C++, GNU Bison and RE2C. Subscribe and click the bell icon to receive notifications whenever I publish new episodes. Now I am planning to use the 360 degree video technology that you can see in this video. You probably already realized it, but on a desktop, desktop computer you can drag the camera around by holding the left mouse button and zoom using the scrolling wheel. Let me know in the video, video comments whether you like it or not. See you soon again.